So I mentioned in the last video that my wife and I were doing a one day course with um, a mycologist to learn more about wild mushrooms in central Ontario. And we, so we did do that and we learned quite a bit. While we were out with the expert and some other people, we found quite a number of edible mushrooms. So what we were happy to find is that one of the main mushrooms here that we f started finding last year, we weren't sure if it was edible or not. And we found out that not only is it edible, but it's a choice edible. We have loads of these things on the property and they're beautiful mushrooms. Uh, they look tasty and they are. So they're actually called milk caps as well. I guess when you break it, there's a, uh, the latex inside oozes out a little bit, but very, very good mushrooms. So I'm going to cook up a batch of these as well as some of the other ones that we can find today. That's not for you, Pope. No, 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 don't eat it. <laughs> so I'm going to collect a bunch of these and then see what else we can find. So we're in the highlands here of Ontario near Algonquin Park and what it is is a mixed woodland. It's a, a transition between the eastern uh, woodlands, decidu mainly deciduous, um, transition between that and the con coniferous, mainly coniferous boreal forest to the north. Um, because we have this mixed forest, like these hemlocks, which this forest consisted of a lot of, uh, we get quite a diverse number of mushrooms. Do not eat mushrooms based on what you see me doing here on this video or on this channel. Uh, maybe in the future when I become better at identifying them, then uh, maybe you can trust my opinion. But for now, I'm going off what I've been taught just recently. Um, I'm making 100% sure that I've identified the species correctly before we consume them. And then we start off by eating a small amount before we uh, have them as a complete meal. Even those black trumpets the other day ate a uh, smaller quantity than I would have if we had eaten those before and we knew that our stomachs were, were fine to handle that. So I'm excited about this. I love that I'm able to now add mushrooms to my wild game dinners here. So let's see what else we can find. I believe these are oyster mushrooms here on this tree. This is an old dead maple. And we're in a grove of predominant, predominantly maple trees, except there's a black cherry. I see this tree right behind it. It's a black cherry, which we don't have a lot of here. Um, it's a beautiful dead standing one, actually, just over by the meadow that I'm going to cut down this winter when I can sled it back. Nice, big, perfectly dry, but not rotted um, cherry that I can cut up to make furniture out of it. But uh, this tree is completely rotten. It's going to fall down sometime. But this uh, oyster mushroom is growing right on the trunk. So I'm going to take it back and uh, positively identify it using the guides. And I'll probably post a picture on one of the Facebook groups as well. Uh, mushroom Facebook pages and ask for everybody's advice before consuming it. Uh, I would never, and if I have any doubts at all, we won't cook it. With mushrooms, always better to be safe than sorry. So don't eat it if you don't know 100%. But I think I've got enough resources and uh, people that can help me identify them and a few guidebooks that we can go through to make sure 100%. I'm sure about these milk caps because we found them yesterday with the mycologist and actually ate them last night and they were good. This little bear's tooth, small little thing. Uh, that we ate last night as well, so I know that's safe. These puff balls, there's a number of different puff balls, you know, including the giant one that I think most people are most familiar with that are commonly eaten. There's a few small species as well that are edible. I think this is one of them, but again, I'm going to confirm that. One of them that has the pig skin uh, texture on the outside and is black on the inside when you break it open, it's definitely poisonous. That's not this for sure, but like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of research and then see which ones I can cook up for dinner last night or tonight. This is this is that burn area that I've shown you a couple of times in the past, once in the w winter. Really growing up thick now. So 
some of the trees, most of the trees are still standing, but some of them are down. So if you've been watching the channel since what February March 2017 this is actually where I started I was out for a walk one day in January or February 2017 on a crown land spot not far actually from where the cabin sits and I was talking about the cabin that I built when I was 21 and that I'd like to do that again so I made some inquiries and I was able to get permission to build a cabin on someone's property and I did that. I started cutting down logs. I cut down about 75 or 80 trees and I've used some of those and a lot of them still sit here. Beautiful spot. I actually kind of miss working here and I miss the people here. Had a, a really good time uh, spending time here cutting those trees down, preparing them and starting the first couple of uh, rows on the cabin here and building this tripod so I can help lift the logs and uh, fishing in the stream here and hunting on the ridge behind the stream had some uh, fun here but then uh, life changed and decided to get serious about simplifying and starting a new uh, wilderness homestead where this is a little bit more well you can hear there's noise traffic noise here and jets are flying over so it's not quite um, the remote area that I ended up in um, but this is the kind of familiar landscape that I grew up in, this type of forest and this type of uh, sort of farmland and mixed uh, woodland type stuff. But, you know, it was a nice project and I, I was happy to get it started here. And it refueled my passion for simplifying and living more of a wilderness lifestyle. So that's how I ended up where I am. So here the logs are, they're going to uh, be utilized. Didn't want them to sit here being, uh, going to waste. So. I am going to make sure that they get utilized. So I'm sitting on a cedar, two rows of cedar here. I have, well, I cut down, I don't know, two dozen cedar trees maybe. Just thinning out the forest because they're really thick forest here and you wouldn't know that I cut them down actually a year and a half later. And uh, the rest of them are spruce trees that I thinned out a spruce forest for them uh, just up over the hill. Really need to be thinned as well. So, so nothing here is going to be wasted and I am getting ready to start my next building. Just look at my stockpile logs here thinking I don't remember cutting any large trees down. It's nice two nice straight large uh, tops of logs there. Like I said I don't remember cutting them down. Well I didn't. I guess it came down in a windstorm last year by the looks of it so they've been dead for a while. See how thick this forest is. Really, really dense. Some of it was uh, planted, so pine plantation. The red pines and the white pines behind me. All these cedars would have been natural here. So it is naturally a cedar forest along the creek, but it's so dense that there's no undergrowth. If you compare that to my property that's been logged in recent years, 15 years ago, all the sunlight was able to reach that forest floor. So you got all that thick undergrowth that's hard to walk through. So that's probably the least interesting and uh, shortest video I've made in quite a while, in my opinion. It is stuff I want to share with you, but I was hoping to have it in a much longer video, just as a small component. So every fall, as long as I can remember, I've been anxious about not being able to get out and enjoy what's my what is my favorite season of the year with the line of work that i was in fall was the busiest time yet it coincided with the time that i wanted to spend the most time outdoors so it's been a real conflict throughout my life and as a result I, i've been really anxious late summer and early fall because i knew i just wasn't prepared didn't have time to get ready for hunting season for example and fall fishing uh, getting out and enjoying the cooler temperatures with no bugs and as you know, I like to uh, 
pursue game. So I'm out hunting and fishing a lot of the time in the fall. But like I said, many years, I just didn't have time to do that. So this is the first time since my early 20s when I had the cabin that I built when I was 21 that I've been able to get out and enjoy every minute of the fall. So the result of that is that I haven't been indoors to edit videos. So when I woke up this morning, I decided I better get this video edited for tomorrow morning. Um, but it was, and it was pouring rain, so it was a good time to do that. But now that it's cleared up, I'm back out here in the woods with uh, Callie, taking her for a walk and seeing if we can flush some grouse or squirrels or, or uh, rabbits or something. My wife and I decided to go on a road trip. Last minute, spontaneous road trip to Lake Superior. Checked the forecast last weekend uh, at the cabin and it was calling for periods of rain. And I just didn't want to work on the projects that I'm working on right now in that rain. When I, especially when I saw that the forecast for the Algoma and Thunder Bay region was calling for a fairly decent weather. So I've always wanted to spend some time up there at this time of year, exploring the lakes, rivers and the, and the lake itself and the surrounding hillsides when they're in full color. So that's exactly what we did and had an amazing time. But we just got back last night and I just didn't have time to edit the video. So I did make public the video yesterday about the cooking of the mushroom pasta and the bone marrow. So I hope you enjoyed that one at least. And next week, of course, I'll get back to my regularly scheduled program of working on the cabin and doing some other cabin life stuff here. Maybe Monday or Wednesday, but certainly on Friday. So make sure you tune in for that. So I appreciate your patience this week. Look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.